In May 2016, the Chief of Staff of the United States Air Force published the Air Superiority 2030 Flight Plan. In it, the Air Force outlines emerging challenges, operational needs, and its strategy for the coming decade. While the classified version is naturally classified, the open access publication yields an excellent insight into the analysis and conclusions of the United States Air Force. In the eyes of the United States Air Force, American air superiority is threatened by the emergence of sophisticated capabilities among several potential adversaries. As the document reads, the Air Force's projected force structure in 2030 is not capable of fighting and winning against this array of potential adversary capabilities. This is not a surprise given the developments in technology and capabilities in many nations. As Douglas Barry, Senior Fellow for Military Aerospace at the International Institute of Security Studies notes, the West, and the US in particular, have become used to being able to operate in a very permissive air environment. There hasn't been a significant threat since the end of the Cold War. And that is changing. So how does the United States aim to tackle this problem? Before we turn to this question, it is important to quickly go over what it wants to achieve, namely the continuation of American air superiority. So what is air superiority? As defined by the document, air superiority is a condition on the spectrum of air control which ranges from adversary air supremacy to air parity to friendly air supremacy. The air superiority condition is achieved when friendly operations are able to proceed without prohibitive interference from opposing forces. Now when talking about air superiority, it's also important to break down the concept into the operational context. Especially the focus on local air superiority in the document is clear by referring to the anti-axis area denial strategies, A to AD in short, followed by potential adversaries. To gain air superiority, you will need a set of complementary capabilities. These are friendly air defense, suppression of enemy air defense, strategic and tactical mobility, and global strike assets. These are also the capabilities we usually think of when talking about air superiority. However, these capabilities do not present the full picture. Several equally important capabilities are in intelligence surveillance and recon, cyberspace, logistics, and space. So we have answered what air superiority is and what capabilities it requires. But why is air superiority so important? This is because air superiority exponentially increases the overall capabilities of joint operations. For example, air superiority guarantees homeland defense, support of allies and security partners, access to the global economic market, operations in enemy territory of both tactical and strategic nature, secure basing and logistics that allows tactical and strategic flexibility. So with that answered, let us turn to the initial question we asked. What are these threats that could result in a loss of air superiority for the United States and its allies? In short, the document identifies two major problems. The first is presented by the emergence of competitive capabilities in potential adversaries. These include the evolution of traditional threat systems such as sophisticated air-to-air, -air, and surface-to-air capabilities. The proliferation of ramjet propulsion for air-to-air -air delivery systems is one example. Yet, it also includes the emergence of capabilities that could challenge the US advantage in cyberspace and space, as well as the development of new delivery systems and platforms. By fusing both, adversaries might have an edge in contested environments as part of an A2 AD strategy. The second problem is presented by the aging and shrinking US fleet and its weapon systems. Specifically, the publication highlights the inadequacy of current procurement methods in countering emerging threats. More on this later. Before going into the proposed solutions, it is worth mentioning that although some capabilities might have a more direct impact on achieving air superiorities than others, there is no silver bullet solution. Instead, the Air Force is advised to develop a family of capabilities that operate in and across the air, space and cyberspace domains. The first solution is part of the procurement process of weapon systems and weapon delivery platforms. 
considering the pace of developments in other parts of the world that could potentially achieve parity or near parity in contested environments with the United States, the publication recommends several changes. First, the integration of prototype systems should be more fluid to speed up troubleshooting and technological advancement. This also grants crews training opportunities in an organic manner. Second, the Air Force should reject thinking focused on next generation platforms. While futuristic devices pushed forward in formal programs might sound good to the public, next generation development focuses more on what could be achieved in the future rather than what could be achieved now, thus exaggerating costs, pushing schedules and limiting advancements. Beyond this, Air Superiority 2030 sets out five major areas that require further development so that the United States Air Force can keep its competitive edge. These are basing and logistics, find, fix, track and assess, target and engage, command and control, non-material capability area development. We will now go over some key points of each critical development category, basing and logistics. We often think of basing and logistics of being something very simple, getting supplies from A to B. Indeed, AS2030 places emphasis on creating a permissive environment in which forces can be sustained and supported globally via flexible logistics. Yet, this is only part of the story. AS2030 provides additional capacities that merit inclusion. First, commanders need to possess key resources allowing operations in any theater. These do not just include weapon systems, but also, amongst others, interagency cooperation and support. Additionally, the Air Force must expand its defensive capabilities for asset protection. Again, this does not just include local defenses, but also partnerships with other services to provide wide-ranging protection. Whether due to offensive or defensive operations, losses need to be regenerated quickly. Therefore, the Air Force needs to expand its capabilities in rapid force and combat power recovery. And beyond this, advanced air refueling methods are deemed critical to enable flexible operations within the AS2030 framework. Find, fix, track and assess. Put simply, the Air Force wants to achieve information age dominance. This means that it aims to generate an environment in which data is collected from multiple sources, rapidly analyzed and relevant information is distributed to the correct assets within a critical time frame. To do this, an integrated air, space and cyberspace network must be established and maintained. One key development would be the experimentation with data to decision D2D networks. In a nutshell, this would mean using a machine to machine network to centralize massive amounts of data material, which is then turned into usable information for commanders. Another development would be PCA, Penetrating Counter Air, which is also included in the next category. PCA is the development of a fast, long-range, sensor-loaded and competitive aircraft. Within Find, Fix, Track and Assess, this effort is focused on establishing data collection from sensors via this penetrating asset. It should be noted that an analysis of alternatives for PCA is recommended and that PCA might in fact be considered a next-generation platform. Target and engage. To enable the Air Force to strike potential adversaries even under an A2AD scenario, capabilities must be developed to allow consistent penetration of highly contested environments. These include the aforementioned penetrating counter air, this time to allow the application of kinetic and non-kinetic effects. That's a fancy way of saying, for example, that it needs to shoot something down or is supposed to gather data. Of note too is the inclusion of the B-21 within AS-2030. The document argues that B-21s should be developed as a long-range strike asset versus counter-air targets, meaning it is supposed to destroy targets that can engage other US Air Force assets. While we are on this subject, AS-2030 also argues that electronic warfare should be enhanced and that targets should be challenged via multiple systems as part of the defeating agile intelligent targets effort. Command and Control until now, Air Force capabilities were greatly enhanced using Battle Management Command and Control platforms, BMC2 in short, like AWACS. By 2030, such capabilities might be at a risk. AS2030 advises the establishment of a more flexible and robust battle space information architecture, 
This would include advanced battle management systems that allow BMC2s to function in stress environment. As well as that, commanders should be able to synchronize forces and assets without direct contact. As such, it is recommended that capability development across air, space and cyberspace is also directed towards enabling operational level command and control in any situation. Non-material capability area development. Non-material capability developments are, as an example, capability enhancements that do not require the development of a new technology or the acquisition of a new system. Simplified, it's saying that if you find a capability insufficient, you can sometimes fix it by changing your method of use. As part of the non-material capability development, the AS2034 should apply a consistent effort in changing acquisition methods to continuously integrate new technologies within the Air Force, so to ensure an organic maturation of new systems and subsystems. Systems should also be built to facilitate modular upgrades. Testing foundations for new multi-domain capabilities should be enhanced to quickly assess the feasibility of new technologies the Air Force needs. Technologies must be deemed feasible before projects are pushed forward. And continuing with the above, low-cost efforts should be focused so technologies remain affordable, price-effective and deployable in sufficient quantity within an acceptable time frame. AS2030 essentially argues that maintaining US Air Force air superiority and the ability to quickly gain it in highly contested environments requires a novel approach in the next decade. Capabilities must become flexible, integrated and networked across the force structure. Likewise, several old static capabilities and developments must adapt to ensure competitiveness in the 21st century. Support me via Patreon or share this video if you enjoyed it. Big thank you to Joseph for providing Falcon BMS footage for this video. If you enjoy combat flight simulations, check out his channel. And if you want to know how to save a World War II aircraft that's on fire, check out this video. Or if you want to learn why planes have less armor than you might think, check out this video. As always, have a great day, good hunting and see you in the sky.